I've reviewed the Anycubic Mega S and Zero previously, and today I have another 3D printer from Anycubic to review, the Viper. And I'll try to cover a few things that I think are important instead of repeating things that are in other people's reviews. You're so nosy. Also, if you just want to know if you should buy this printer, I'll come out and just say, yes, it's worth it, but watch the full video for all the details. Uh, I bought this printer off of Amazon, but you can also buy directly off of any Cubic's website. I've organized this video into the following sections. Overview, print quality, likes, dislikes, important findings, and a summary. So for the overview, I won't go super deep into the features of this printer. You can look those up for yourself or watch other reviewers, but here are some of the noteworthy features that I thought important to highlight for this printer. This printer being still aimed at the, you know, quote unquote budget market, has a lot of features packed into it, but it is priced higher than say other budget printers like the Creality Ender 3 line, which I actually have two right here. So my first like, the extruder. The extruder is a BMG type, and I have some experience with this extruder. As I retrofitted my Anycubic Mega S, and it's also the same one that comes on the Mega Zero. The print bed has this removable magnetic print surface with a PEI coating that allows for good adhesion when it's hot and easy print removal when cold. The standout feature is the automatic bed leveling that incorporates the hot end as a strain gauge to detect when the nozzle touches the print bed. Uh, kind of like very similar to how an electronic scale works. The printer then records these measurements and compensates when printing using the z-axis. As a note, there is no way to manually level the print bed. I did a quick bed level test after leveling and it passed with no issues at all. The z-axis has dual lead screws and stepper motors ensuring independent z-axis movements that is used for bed leveling and also has dual optical end switches on either side of the frame. This printer can print common filament types with its volcano style hot end hitting 260 degrees Celsius, but the Bowden tube limits the printing of filaments that require higher temperatures than that. It's uncanny how the frames of all these printers I own are very similar and essentially the Anycubic uh, Viper is a clone of the CR6SE. Print quality. The print quality of this printer is very good. Probably the best out of all my printers. Having said that, I did a side-by-side -side print of these two benches, one on the Viper and one on my regular Ender, and the quality is almost indistinguishable between the two. But where I think the Viper shines over the other budget printers like the Enders is I can bump up the print speeds due to the additional cooling fan. And since the frame overall seems a bit more rigid, I also did a test print of the Owl that was on the included SD card, which by the way, like others have mentioned, is in the wrong folder and should be in the root or else the printer won't see it. Overall, the quality came out well, but I think they could fine tune the slicer settings for this model. I tried printing the Maker's Muse's Clearance Castle and it passed. The only issue is the textured print bed caused the first layer to be squished a little bit. So it needed a little bit of wiggling in order to free the bottom parts. Uh, but the rest of the tolerances on the model um, were fine. I also printed this 3D printer test uh, that I found on Thingiverse that tests various things. And the part that I was most interested in was the bridging. And the Viper seems to have handled that really well. And you can see here the overhangs look great. It's really, really nice. I even played around with vase mode and I printed off this stemless wine glass that I modeled in Fusion 360. This rocket I also modeled in Fusion 360 came out really nice too. Uh, the surface finishes are just really great. This model of Bobo Fett printed at 0.12 millimeter layer height came out fantastic. Um, you can even see that the trigger guard is tiny and it was able to print it. Here are a few other test prints like this functional part here for, um, for dust collection. 
um, this DeWalt battery adapter, this surfboard fin. Yeah, overall, I'm really impressed with the print quality on this printer. I'm also working on printing some lithophanes and that's where I've been spending most of my printer time. So I've been putting a lot of hours on the Viper. Like lithophanes look super cool and the printer did a great job at it. So likes. What do I like about this printer? Well, the setup experience was the best out of all the printers I have owned. It comes out of the box almost assembled. It took 20 minutes to assemble, level, and I was printing. There was no belt tightening or adjustment of any sort. Well, at least for me, but your mileage may vary. I really like this BMG type of extruder. I've been using this type for almost two years now and it works really good. What makes this extruder really nice is the dual gear filament feeder that can push flexible filament through the Bowden tube with no problems. Right here, I have a TPU tire that I printed and it came out great like awesome. The magnetic bed is sweet. I love not having to mess with clips to take the print bed off. Prints stick really well to the PEI surface and when it cools the prints just release with no effort. Also with the print bed being flexible you can also flex it to pop off the prints but that does have the potential to damage the print surface. So it's best just to let it cool. The bed is also reversible. I flipped it over and applied a layer of blue painter's tape, re-leveled the bed and did a few prints. I did this because I like to be able to turn off the heated print bed as it's not always required depending on the bottom shape of your model and the size of the model. You know, after the first few layers, there's no sense leaving the heated print bed on when it's not really required, but that's just a personal preference. This printer can print fast and it's due to the hot end assembly having lots of cooling fans, allowing lots of filament to be put down and then rapidly cooled. Now the hot end is an all metal E3D volcano style and it heats up relatively fast, but anecdotally, I don't think it heats up as fast as the Mega S, but it's still faster than all my enders. It does have a filament runout sensor that is handy and the touch screen is responsive and very easy to navigate. The Viper also has the largest print volume of all the printers that I own, coming in at 235 millimeters by 235 millimeters by 260 millimeters. Dislikes. So let's talk about a few dislikes or concerns I have about this printer. First off, a simple one. I really don't like the side filament loader that mounts on the side that came with the printer. It takes up too much horizontal space there should have been an option out of the box to mount the filament above the gantry. I ordered an extra filament mount and well, moved it. I understand that mounting a big roll of filament on top of the printer can have a few negative effects, like wobbling the frame when the print head gets moving really fast. But hey, until I run into issues, I'll move it then. The Viper has the TMC2209 silent stepper motor drivers so you don't get that robotic whirling sound when they're in operation. Except, oddly on the Viper, the Y-axis seems to make that robotic whirling noise. So it's not totally silent as they claim. So besides the fans and the Y-axis, you can't really hear this printer, but it is a bit disappointing that the Y-axis steppers are not completely silent even though I have my Ender 3 running back there uh, printing and you can't really hear it except for the fans. Now on the display on the LCD panel, I wish the um, temperature numbers were larger. They're really tiny on the LCD screen because when you're monitoring your prints, those are the numbers uh, that you want to know at a glance. Inside the storage drawer comes uh, a few tools that are included, but it's lacking a pair of needle nose tweezers, which I really like. That came with the Mega S. And the included side cutters are hard to hold and you will be using them often when cutting filament. The firmware does have print resume in case of power loss, but unless the power comes back on in a short period of time, it won't matter because the print will pop off of the PEI coating when it cools off. The Viper has a light so you can see the surface of where it is printing. It's good attempt, but for practical use, 
I just leave it off. I don't use it at all. The USB connection is a USB type B and I think 2008 called and they want their USB connector back. Now I have no idea why any Cubic stuck with a type B connection which was also on the Mega S but yet on the Mega Zero it's a micro USB connector. I personally prefer a micro USB or type C. All right important findings. Let's get to some juicy stuff. Thermal runaway protection. I did some testing and I am happy to report that thermal runaway protection is enabled on the Viper. I tested it by removing the thermosistor or the thermal coupler. I'm not sure which one it is, but the, the temperature sensor from the hot end and then attempted to let the printer heat up to printing temperature. It stopped and it threw an error code, which was great. Seems to be working. So where this printer has issues is internally. I took off the bottom panel to access the power supply to check the wire terminal block connections for the hot end and the heated bed. The wires themselves are stranded wires, but the ends of the wires are tinned with solder. I'm disappointed they're not terminated with ferrules where they are tightened down in the terminal block. You might be saying, well, that seems okay. Well, it's really not. The reason why I am covering this issue is in my Anycubic Mega S, the end of the wire actually heated up and caused part of the plastic of the terminal block to separate from the circuit board. So yeah, that's what I'd consider a fire hazard. The wire was for the heated print bed and when the printer noticed a fault, it threw a thermal runaway code. So at least it shut down. But that was a little alarming. I had snapped a few photos at the time, but I can't seem to find them so I could show you guys. So you'll have to take me at my word. But I did reach out to Anycubic and they didn't give any explanation of what could have happened, but they did send me a replacement motherboard. Uh, so I'm including this in my review because that experience left me a little worried. So what am I going to do about it? Well, I'm not sure because there's not enough room in the Viper to add the ferrules. For now, I'm going to keep an eye out on it. You should never leave a 3D printer unattended. And well, my experience, that kind of really reinforces that point. I'm not an electrical engineer, so take what I say here with a grain of salt. From what I can understand, the reason why this happened is the stranded soldered wire ends have no compressive strength. So the terminal block screw pushing down on the tin wire end must have started to weaken or became loose and the contact or internal resistance went up causing the wire to heat up and over time it got weaker and weaker until it finally failed. All right, this was a long video. Final comments. I can't comment on the long-term reliability of this printer, but so far it's been working really well and it's been printing nonstop for two weeks. The automatic bed leveling is fantastic and really reduces issues with getting that perfect first layer. The magnetic PEI flexible print bed is a nice feature that I really love. The printer is mostly quiet, has great print quality and can print at very fast speeds compared to my other printers. Now this printer I think would make for a great first 3D printer for someone with no experience with 3D printing. But if you didn't have the extra to spend, I think the Enders would make a great choice as well with the Ender V2 that I have behind me way back there would probably would be my like top pick. Having said that, you will have to spend several hours assembling and tuning those types of printers. Overall, I give the Anycubic Viper a highly recommend with the caveat keep an eye out on those tin wires in the terminal block. It may never be an issue, but in my experience with the Mega S, has me a little cautious. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Anycubic Viper. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so other people can find it. And if you are looking for something else to watch, check out my 3D printed surfboard or electric surfboard build that utilized 3D printing. If you do decide to buy this printer, Use my Amazon affiliate link in the description box.